Check it out. I got five Mac Mini Pros networked, and I'm going to beat the Wildlife Extreme record. Yeah, wait. No. No, 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 no. Don't worry. No Mac Minis were harmed in the making of this video. But I did blow a few up on my entry-level M2 Pro Mac Mini using Blender and After Effects. Hey guys, it's CJ here with Elevated Systems and today we're diving into the world of simple VFX. I've been using the 16GB M2 Pro Mac Mini for a couple of weeks now and I'm excited to show you all what I've been working on. This week, I took a 4K 60fps clip I filmed on my cell phone, brought it into Blender for some motion tracking and 3D camera magic, added some virtual elements and particle sims, then blew it all up. After rendering, I took it into After Effects for some final tweaks. I'm not going to give you all a tutorial, but I am going to give you a behind the scenes look at the project and show you how the M2 Pro Mini performed. We'll compare it to my base model M1 Max Mac Studio and a similarly priced Windows PC build. Let's do this. Jumping into the project, I started by setting up a shot, just the keyboard, mouse, and the display, and several black pieces of paper for tracking points. Now, I don't really need these. There are enough contrast points in the scene to track, but I do want these for something else. After reviewing all my clips, I pulled the best one into Blender and quickly figured out that a 4K 60fps footage was going to be problematic, so I used a half-res proxy, which worked well. I started by selecting and motion tracking my tracking points, which worked flawlessly. They tracked pretty much instantaneously with just a few that needed tweaking. Once they were all tracked, I solved for the camera motion and got a reliability of 0.64 pixels, which is really good. I set up the scene and locked the default elements to the surface of the desk, and once moved, scaled, and rotated into the correct position, I replaced the default box with a Max Mini model. I got it scaled and positioned, lit the scene with an HDRI so it closely matched the plate. I'll soften the shadows later in the compositor. Once the first Mac was set, I duplicated it and added an explode modifier and tweaked the settings a bit to get some shrapnel flying. Then I installed the cell fracture add-on, which I planned to use for the next three Macs I added to the scene. However, when I applied the modifier to one of the Macs, Blender crashed to desktop. Luckily, I have autosave on, so I recovered the project and tried again, and it crashed again. Now, Cell Fracture can have some problems and will fail sometimes with geometry that isn't clean and uniform, but it doesn't usually crash the software. So for a sanity check, I opened a fresh project and just tried Cell Fracture on the default cube, and it immediately crashed. So while I was uninstalling and reinstalling Blender on the Mini, I jumped on my Mac Studio and tried to fracture the default cube, and it worked. Back to the mini and after reinstalling Blender, Cell Fracture still didn't work. So I abandoned my plan of propelling an impactor from the initial explosion through the Cell Fractured Max and essentially turning them all into flying shrapnel. And instead I just hand keyframed the Max to go flying with one bouncing off the wall and directly into the camera. I also added motion blur to the objects, however, getting this to look good was extremely difficult because the viewport render mode even at just 50 cycles, was extremely slow on the M2 Pro processor using Metal GPU rendering, which is the fastest rendering option. I'll get into render viewport more in a bit. Despite the viewport, modeling and animating was very smooth on the Mini, and I was able to animate a very fast explosion pretty quickly. Once I had the animation good enough, it was time for the effects, and I started by adding an icosphere and applying the quick smoke effect. With some adjustments, this thing looked pretty good with smoke rising across about 120 frames right up to the point of boom. Now, the plan was to add a second particle sim explosion emanating from the exploding Mac. However, while both worked fine on their own, together I just ran into problems. Now, I've done multiple particle sims in the same project before, fire on water or multiple explosions, and typically as long as you keep each domain in a separate layer, it's usually fine. Now, there are some tricks like animating your domain to enter and exit at specific points, and I probably could have solved this. However, after looking at a few frame test renders, I decided one particle simulation would be enough. So because this entire explosion takes place across just six frames or a tenth of a second, 
I cheated a little and just added an icosphere with an emissive material that'll scale up and back down across the six frames to give us a little flash at the point of combustion. I also changed the smoke sim to smoke and fire and built a much more dense material for it. So now instead of our stack of minis starting to smoke and then explode, they catch on fire and then explode. Now building materials, especially the smoke material was also really difficult on the M2 Pro due to the render viewport speed or complete lack of it. First, in order to do any look dev on it at all, I had to set the smoke resolution down below 100 and still I'd make a slight change to the color ramp or density of my material. And by the time enough cycles were rendered to see it, I forgot what it looked like originally to know if the change was better or worse. I just kind of guessed at it here. And ultimately while the final product worked, the material was too dense and I didn't end up with as much white smoke as I wanted. Anyway, once the scene was good enough, I baked the sim at a resolution at 256, which took the mini about 27 minutes. I added some denoising to the composition to help with render times. And after doing some test renders, determined a good number of render cycles to balance time and quality was between eight and 900. So I set it to 896 and rendered out the sequence. All 541 frames rendered out in 11 hours and 41 minutes. That's the time it took to render the frames, but the total time of the render was about 15 hours because like many people do, I started the render at just after midnight and then I went to bed. When I got up seven hours later, I discovered with just 16 gigabytes of memory, the mini wasn't able to load in textures anymore. And the render froze on frame 429 at 435 in the morning. I restarted the render at 737 AM and the last 113 frames finished at 301 PM. Oh, also important to know, while this started at 4K, I brought it into Blender at 1080p and because I test rendered some frames and knew about how long it was gonna take, I cut the resolution in half again and output at 960 by 540 because it'll just be faster to upscale later. Now, while this would seem like a video sequence, it's actually not. I'm just rendering out the mesh and simulation on one transparent layer and the shadows on another layer and then compositing them together on top of the corresponding video frame. So disk caching doesn't help here. But this is why you render each frame to an image and not the whole sequence to a video file. So when it does freeze or crash, you can just pick up where you left off. So with that done, I moved the project over to my base model Mac studio and there really wasn't much difference. Motion tracking the points was just as seamless as it was on the mini. Working with the layout and solid and material preview viewports was just as smooth. And unfortunately the extra eight GPU cores didn't make the rendered viewport any faster. It was just as slow as the M2 Pro. Baking out the sim took about 46 seconds longer than it did on the Mac mini and surprisingly rendering out the entire sequence took 12 hours and 56 minutes or about 3% longer than the M2 Pro. However, with double the memory, it completed all in one shot without freezing. So it actually finished the job two hours faster. Now moving to the PC again, motion tracking worked flawlessly. There's really no way to distinguish instantaneously from immediately tracking and building the camera track working in the layout was smooth. However, the huge difference on the PC is with an Nvidia GPU is the ability to enable the optics renderer in the viewport, making look dev actually possible as the frames rendered almost instantly. Any changes I made to the project or material, I could see in practically real time. Now the 13th gen Intel 10 core CPU is a little behind the 10 core M2 Pro and even the M1 Max as it took almost three minutes longer to bake the simulation. However, back to the GPU, even at a resolution of 256, the viewport rendered the sim frames really fast. Using the GPU and optics renderer also meant the full render was able to finish in three hours and 52 minutes, which is well, a lot faster than either of the Macs, but I'll get to that more later. Right now, the project is unfinished. I have ugly black spots to remove and a green screen to replace. So I pulled the animation into After Effects and created a new comp. After Effects and the Content Aware Fill Tool is the reason I use these big paper dots. I've been using Adobe's AI tools in Photoshop, which to some degree use the Apple Silicon's neural engine. So I wanted to see how much of any improvement I could get from the M2 Pro's neural engine in After Effects. 
Spoiler alert, there's no real neural engine boost, but it doesn't mean the workflow wasn't good. If you don't know what content aware fill is or how it works, there are plenty of videos and articles explaining it. What I will say is the situation I'm giving After Effects is the hardest. I have a moving camera, but a stationary object. The perspective is shifting, so the pixels around that spot are different in every frame, and the camera never sees what's behind the object. This takes the most calculation and can work, but usually not with the best results. I tried it with one of the dots on the wall and After Effects froze while analyzing at like 71% because the system just ran out of memory. After Effects was using up to 45 gigs of memory, so deep into SSD swap, but there is a way to make this easier for After Effects, and that's by giving it reference frames to show it what's behind the objects. So I pulled a frame at about every second and removed the dots in Photoshop using Photoshop's Content Aware Fill or the Stamp Tool, and once After Effects had those clean plates, it was able to calculate and render all the in-between frames in about a minute and a half per dot, and the overall results were really good. For the three markers on the desk mat, since the mat was a random fabric surface, I decided to use the old school method. So again, I created a clean plate in Photoshop, motion tracked the marker, transferred the motion path to a null object, masked out the dot, and parented the null object to the clean plate. Now, this is faster and works okay for this flat fabric, but because of the perspective shift from the shaky handheld camera, it wouldn't have worked well for especially the three-dimensional wall panels. Now, I just need to replace the green screen display. While there are a few ways to do this, I'm just gonna go with Mocha, which I launched. I set my mask area, tracked the clip, which worked really well here. I made it challenging with the edges of the monitor going out of frame, but Mocha hung on and tracked it well. I set the corner pins and refined them across the comp. Now, I have tracking points on the screen just in case I wanted to do some camera tracking within After Effects, and build like a 3D exploding screen animation or something. But for the sake of time, I have a pre-rendered video clip I made, which I just pulled in and set as the screen replacement. Pretty easy here, but it works. I give the finished comp a quick look, and other than the fact that there's a single frame where all the tracking points appear for some reason, everything looks pretty good, so I'll just fix that in post. Add it to render queue and output in 40 megabyte per second, H.264, Again, pulled this project into both the Mac Studio and PC, and everything worked pretty much exactly the same. I masked out the markers and used the Content Aware Fill tool, using the reference images and filled in the misses pieces in the same 90 seconds on all the systems. To simplify things, I compared three systems, and on paper, they all perform the same with similar numbers, Preview times, caching times, tracking times, calculation times, even render times were within eight seconds of each other. But in real world use, the M2 Pro Mini lagged behind. Its viewport performance was significantly weaker. At first, the Mac Mini had the fastest RAM preview, but as I worked on the project, the image started to blur and pixelate while doing things like keyframing a mask path, which made the already tedious process even more difficult but the studio and PC didn't have this issue, and it's due to After Effects poor memory management and the Mac Mini only having 16 gigabytes of RAM. AE will consume as much memory as you give it, and it doesn't do a good job of purging old irrelevant data. You can manually do it, though that'll purge everything, including the current cache composition. Just previewing this nine second comp once used all 12 gigabytes of allotted memory. However, enabling the disk cache on the Mac Mini did help and I didn't experience any more problems in this timeline, at least for this project. But for bigger projects, especially with 3D workflows, more RAM is necessary. So if you're primarily a Premiere Pro editor and use After Effects for basic tasks like motion graphics, text, object tracking, masking, object removal or replacement, the Mac Mini is a good option, but if you need more power, go for the base model Mac Studio, which already has 32 gigabytes of RAM, eight more GPU cores, is always silent, and has some front ports. Or the $1,300 PC performed just as well, if not better, and if you're primarily an After Effects creator, or you wanna be, it's also a great option and can upgrade and grow with you. This has 32 gigabytes of RAM, and just for $90, I can install this matching 32 gig kit and upgrade to 64. 
as far as Blender goes, the M2 Pro is no different from all the Apple Silicon Macs I've reviewed before, not equipped for meaningful 3D work. No matter how many Mac vs. PC Blender Classroom or BMW benchmarks you see, those are CPU render times, and the days of rendering projects on a desktop CPU are long gone. GPUs are made for 3D workloads, and the Apple SoC GPU cores just can't keep up with dedicated graphics cards in this area. Now, the Apple GPU cores are improving. The Mac Mini with eight less GPU cores finishing the animation sequence faster than the studio was surprising, but waiting 12 to 13 hours for a project this size is too long, especially when I can do it in under four for the same price. And the argument that Macs are quieter and use less power doesn't really hold up either. The Mac mini isn't silent and the PC averaging 210 watts over 3.87 hours used 0.8 kilowatt hours, while the Mac mini averaging 48 watts over 11.68 hours used 0.6 kilowatt hours. This means waiting an extra seven hours and 49 minutes saved me just three cents on my electric bill. Every pro creator knows time is money and that three cents is a bad return on investment, especially when you factor in the extra time spent building materials in the non-responsive viewport. If you're a 3D artist working with environmental modeling, texturing, lighting, look dev, or rendering, then any current gen Mac is not the way to go. But there you have it guys. As it stands in the series, the Mac Studio comes out on top against the M2 Pro Mini in DaVinci Resolve Studio. The PC simply couldn't handle the complexity of the timeline and failed to deliver. In After Effects, the extra memory of the Mac Studio gives it the advantage, but for those primarily using AE as a Premiere Pro plugin, either the Studio or the Mini is a good choice for a great editing experience. However, if you're a dedicated After Effects Pro and your projects are larger or require more power for 3D compositions, the PC with its versatility and CUDA accelerated rendering capabilities is the way to go. And if you're into 3D work, Macs just can't compete with PCs and programs like Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, or any other 3D design software. Of course, to see what tasks I'm throwing at this Mac Mini next, make sure you're subscribed. As always, be sure to ask any questions below, and I'll see you in the next one.